Greetings, everyone. My name is Cortrell, um, and I am here to minister the word of the Lord. The Lord's been telling me to minister. He's been telling me to preach. And I said, what better way um, than to start this journey than to come on social media um, and do what the Lord has told me to do. It's about time I said yes um, and just follow what the Lord has been telling me. So um, I'm going to read a short passage and then I'm going to minister. I may testify however the Lord leads me. That's how we're going to flow. But I am in Isaiah 41. Um, and I'm just going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to jump on some things that hit me the most. So Isaiah 41, God's assurance to Israel. God says, be silent and listen to me, you distant lands. Get ready to present your case in court. You will have your chance to speak. Let us come together to decide who is right. Who was it that brought the conqueror from the east and makes him triumph wherever he goes? Who gives him victory over kings and nations? His sword strikes them down as if they were dust. His arrows scatter them like straw before the wind. He follows in pursuit and marches safely on. So fast that he hardly touches the ground. Who was it that made this happen? Who has determined the course of history? I, the Lord, was there from the beginning. And I, the Lord, will be there at the end. Amen. What is God saying through this passage? Just think about it. Just meditate on that. What is God saying to you in this passage? So we're going to skip down to, let's see. We're going to skip down to the eighth verse. Eighth verse reads in the Good News Translation. But you, Israel, you, my servant, you are the people that I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. I brought you from the ends of the earth. I called you from its farthest corners and said to you, you are my servant. I did not reject you, but chose you. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I am your God. Let nothing terrify you. I will make you strong and help you. I will protect you and save you. Those who are angry with you will know the shame of defeat. Those who fight against you will die and will disappear from the earth. I am the Lord your God. I strengthen you and tell you, do not be afraid. I will help you. The Lord says, small and weak as you are, Israel. Put your name, small and weak as you are. Do not be afraid. I will help you. I, the holy God of Israel, am the one who saves you. I will make you like a threshing board with spikes that are new and sharp. You will thresh mountains and destroy them. Hills will crumble into dust. You will toss them in the air. The wind will carry them off and they will be scattered by the storm. Then you will be happy because I am your God. You will praise me, the Holy One, the Holy God of Israel. When my people and their need look for water, when their throats are dry with thirst, then I, the Lord, will answer their prayer. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon you. Amen. I will make rivers flow among barren hills and springs of water run in valleys. I will turn the dust into pools of water and the dry land into flowing springs. I will make cedars grow in the desert and acacias and myrtles and olive trees. All of it, y'all. <laughs> forests will grow in barren land, forests of pine and juniper and cypress. People will see this and know that I, the Lord, have done it. They will come to understand that Israel's holy God has made it happen. And we're going to stop there at the 20th verse. So what is the Lord telling us? Basically, the Lord is telling us that he is with us. He is with you. I know a lot of circumstances can come into our lives. We're in relationships. We're in jobs that we don't like. We're dealing with the 
emotions of life. We're dealing with depression. We're dealing with sick afflictions in our body, sickness. We're dealing with lost loved ones. We're dealing with bad habits and we don't know where to turn to. It kind of seems like we're alone. And I've been, I've been there before where I felt like I was alone. I felt like God, nobody was there but me. And God has taken me through a season where he's literally taken away things from me. He's literally humbled me. A lot of times God will take away things in order to add to you. But in this particular season, my mind has been crazy everywhere. I felt like I was alone. And this, the word assures us that God is with us. He fights for us. When we're going through, he gives us new peace daily. When we're tired, he gives us strength. And when we're still, when we're tired, he'll also give us rest. Last night, my body had so much pain. I was aching all over. I was like, Lord, this bed doesn't feel the same anymore. Lord, before I had peace in this bed, I could come in this bed, I could fall asleep, I could dream well, dream godly dreams. But recently, I've been in the Lord's will. And you have to understand, when, you're in, when you are in the Lord's will, and when you make a decision to follow Christ, you are on the battlefield. One thing I did hear from Prophet Victor Greaves, um, he hosts this... Um, online prayer call Tuesdays and Thursdays. He told us salvation is not free. It's not, it costs something. When you walk with Christ, it costs. You have to lay down your life. It costs. That costs. It costs to be on the battlefield. A lot of people don't have to be on the battlefield. Remember, the enemy doesn't bother anybody he already has. So if you're on the battlefield, what do you expect? turmoil. You expect things to go wrong. You expect people to rise up against you. Might lose your job. Might have to go without. But you have to realize that this God that we read about, that we just read about, is the same God that will lead you through the waters. You may have lost your job, but God will lead you to a new one. You may have lost what you had, but God will bless you more than what you had before. Just look at Job's life. The enemy had to ask for permission to mess with Job's life. And God gave him permission, but God said, you shall not kill him. And what did the enemy do? He took advantage. Job's life, he was here and he was down here. He lost it all, essentially. He didn't lose his life, but in his mind, he lost it all. He became very upset. But at the last part of Job's life, God blessed him so much more than what he had before. So much more. And that's how God will do you if you trust him. God wants to fight your battle. The Lord wants to be there with you. He wants to heal your broken heart. Your broken heart. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you strength. He wants to give you love. He wants you to possess the fruits of the spirit. He wants you to possess love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temper. He wants you to enjoy it all. He says he will be with you. He says he will be with you. He says the God of Israel will never abandon you. He will make rivers flow among barren hills. You may be living paycheck to paycheck, making ends meet, but God is still sustaining you. You still have food in your belly. Lights are still on. Water paid. You're still able to take a shower. God is providing for you in those rivers. He also says, in springs of water run in the valley. He will make rivers flow among barren hills and springs of water run in the valley. Amen. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the dry land into flowing springs. Whatever is dry in your life, God will hydrate if you give it to him. God wants all of you. He wants every crevice in your heart, every crevice in your mind, every crevice in your soul. You're not crazy. 
You're not crazy. God wants all of you. He wants every part of your body. Surrender it to him and watch God do it. Watch God change your habits. Watch God change your mind. Watch God change your motives. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God that will sustain you. We serve a God that will keep you. We serve a God that will give you the desires of your heart as long as your mind is stayed on him. If you truly know the God that I serve, I serve a God who does crazy things. But you got to have that crazy faith. If God says he's going to do it, I'm going to believe that he will do it. He is the God that created, that spoke the world into existence. He is the God that allows the sun to rise. He is the God that formed the oceans and the seas. For the Bible says, come on now. He dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor. How much more will he clothe you? If the birds of the sky don't worry where they will eat or drink, aren't you worth, the Bible says, aren't you worth more? Come on, y'all. He gave you dominion over everything, the whole world. You're worth more. He loves you. Accept him. Accept him. Follow his ways. Follow his way. It doesn't matter what people think around you. They may call you crazy because you're crazy for Jesus. The world did not know him. The world rejected Jesus. They will reject you. Stop trying to fit in. You weren't made to fit in. You're marked. You're chosen. You're not made to fit in with every single body. God is calling you. He's anointing you for the purpose and plan that he has for your life. Will you say yes? Will you take him at his word? Will you not only read the word, will you apply it to your life and build a strong foundation in Jesus Christ? That's what God wants. He wants your yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes in those hard circumstances. Yes in those hard ways. He said he would be with you. So if God is with you when the enemy attacks you, why even fear? The Bible says put on the whole armor of God so you'll be able to get... So you will be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks of the devil. Put on the whole armor. This is your armor. Christ is your armor. Holy Spirit is your armor. Put it on. Wear it. Feed yourself with the word of God. It is living. The Bible says it is living. So many times I opened up this word, y'all. It's all raggedy. So many times I opened up this word on a random page and it spoke directly what God was saying to me. It's a living book. It's not like any other. So what I need you to do is surrender to God. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him know that your answer is yes. Let him know, though you may sway, your answer will still be yes. I'm not saying that you won't fall sometimes. We all do. We're human. God knows we're human. So stop being, stop feeling so hard on yourself. Just know that when we fall, we get back up again. And God wants to shift your life. He wants to change your life. He wants to mold you. He wants to shape you. He wants to make you that king or that queen that you wanted to be. God, I've seen him do some miraculous things. Miraculous things. And it's not just for your enjoyment. It's to give him glory. So, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are the true and living God. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank you that we can trust in you. We can rely on your word, Lord, and that it will not come back void. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch your people that are viewing this video on today, God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch their hearts, God. Penetrate their hearts, God. Allow them to say yes to you, God. Lord, allow them to say yes, God, even when their friends say no. Allow them to say yes, God, even when their parents say no, God. Give them community, God. Give them peace in their mind, God. Speak to them, God. Allow them to apply this word to their hearts, God. Allow it to be on good ground, a strong foundation. 
And Lord, we thank you now, God, that you are delivering them and you are setting them free from oppression, God. That, Lord, you are shifting their mind. You are shifting their motives. God, that you are sanctifying them, God. That you are pouring your oil on them, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, because, Lord, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, if we had a thousand tongues, Lord, we wouldn't be able to say thank you enough, God. And Lord, we pray, God, for the one that doesn't know you, God. Lord, we pray, God, that you will enter their hearts, God, their mind, God, that you will plant your Holy Spirit, God, that they will receive your Holy Spirit, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, that you will do it for them, God, that you will save them, deliver them, and set free. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope this word blessed you. Um, I kind of... Um, am new to this, but I pray that something that I said touched your heart to know that you are not normal. God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles. Do not fret. He will fight your battles. He will fight your battles. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Prophet Winkfield. Yes, I'm going to call myself what God calls me because that's what he called me. You guys have a blessed one and peace.